All right, NTSB released this final report. You can see the aircraft there from May 20th, 2020. It was a Cirrus aircraft. You could see that CAPS parachute uh, tried to deploy. There's the smoke. Um, witnesses said they heard a loud bang. They saw the aircraft wobble. You can see everybody running to the scene now. It was near a Dunlap uh, school. We can try to slow it down. It looks like the aircraft was inverted. And the pilot probably deployed the parachute uh, too late. Not enough time and too much speed coming in. But this is the final report here. Santa Maria, California, May 20th, 2020. We're going to go over it. One pilot fatal did not make it. This is the aircraft from the Cirrus uh, website. SR-20. November 833 Papa Juliet was the tail number. So you can see here, this is where the aircraft ended up. Not much left of the aircraft, sadly, at this Dunlap Elementary School. According to the pilot's flight instructor, the student pilot was making a solo cross-country from Van Nuys, California to Santa Maria. Air traffic control uh, reported that the pilot contacted them requesting a landing and was instructed to go straight in for runway 30. So the aircraft made a straight in approach at runway 30 and appeared to touch down on the runway and then take off. The airplane climbed and entered a left traffic pattern for the runway. When the airplane was about two thirds of the way along the extended downwind leg, it leveled off temporarily at about uh, 1,440 feet above the ground. Shortly thereafter, the airplane started a left turn and began a gradual descent. The rate of descent increased as the airplane made a continuous steepening left turn through the base leg. The airplane crossed the final leg in a steep left turn descent at about 2,000 feet per minute and then made an abrupt right turn. The airplane descended rapidly until the track ended in the general vicinity of the accident site. So this is the airport here. Santa Maria Airport runway 30 is there. They went up, went, did a go around, did their extended uh, downwind leg as they did their base leg. This is where they ran into problems and this is where they ended up at the Ralph Dunlap elementary school so looking at it there was the basketball courts here and then there's these kind of uh picnic tables here and i believe this is right where the aircraft ended up so we can look here here's the tables this is the parachute as the cap system was deployed very late and this is the uh what's left of that aircraft um, so firefighters are going to get on scene. We're going to try to get and respond to this thing and see, one, how many um, are on board. There was that one solo pilot. It's very hard in a crash like this to identify even the body or anything um, because it's just so mangled. And plus the fire, it's very hot metal, burning metal. You also want to, so after putting out the fire and trying to find any survivors, you want to see is there anybody on the ground that maybe got hurt. But because during the pandemic, there was nobody around that uh that was a good thing um so they're going to go ahead and put foam on it cordon off the area keep everybody away a lot of homes are in this area they all heard the sound so they're probably going to try to run to the school and see what happened and then you also want to see is there anything in these containers that could burn or could hurt you as well so a lot going on on this scene um but a very sad that the pilot did not make it this is the engine as burned as it is so trying to go through this and find out what happened and what caused the plane to crash can be very difficult. The uh, pilot's flight instructor reported that the student pilot started uh, flight training in September 2019. At the time of the accident, the student pilot had about 50 hours of flight experience in which uh, of on top of that ac accident airplane. His first solo was on March 19th and they did two cross-country flights to Santa Maria and the student pilot flew their solo on May 14th, 2020. So the accident flight was along the same route that the pilots uh, and was the pilot's third flo solo flight. So my question is, is how many hours on average do students need um, to do a sufficient um, and to be sufficient to fly solo? And then also, um, should a Cirrus require more hours than maybe a Cessna to go solo or are all aircraft uh, created equal? Probable cause is the NTSB determined the probable cause was the pilot's exceedance of the airplane's critical angle of attack during a steep and descending turn to final approach, which resulted in an aerodynamic stall and loss of control. So I'm not picking on the Cirrus aircraft, but these final reports keep coming out. If you want to go down the rabbit hole, I've put them all together in a playlist. You can watch it here. If not, this is Arfram Kiona. See you guys next time.